That is, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I further bear witness that Muhammad, peace and prayers and blessings be upon him, was the last and final messenger and prophet of Allah. Dear believers, assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. God is greater. God is greater. God is greater. God is greater than anything we can possibly see, touch, taste, feel, hear. Anything we can observe, God is greater than that. And we know that by his magnificent signs that he gives us on a daily basis, second by second, minute by minute, year by year, century by century, present, past, future. Allah is consistently giving us signs to direct us towards him, to direct us towards him. And Allah says in, uh, in, in Ayat 4, I mean, Surah 4, Al-Nisa, Ayat 125, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. SubhanAllah. Um, Allah says in Surah 6, Ayat 38, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. There is not an animal that lives on the earth, nor a being that flies on its wings, but forms part of communities like you. Nothing have we omitted from the book. And they all shall be gathered to their Lord in the end. Sadaqallahu alim. Surely Allah speaks the truth. Allah gives us this magnificent sign. And actually the ayat before this talks about how Allah gives signs. And, and how they were asking Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To give us a sign. Show us a sign, you know. And immediately after this, that ayat comes this ayat, right? This ayah tells us the sign that there is not an animal or a being or an insect or a bug or a creature of any kind that crawls or walks or flies, but that forms communities just like you, right? So Allah has given us that magnificent sign that, you know, when you look at, you look at flocks of birds, you look at herds of sheep, wildebeest, how they join together. That they form community. And why do they form a, a, some sort type of community? They form this community for several reasons. There's a range of reasons. They form this community for protection, right? From the predator. It says that the, 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 the predator or whatever it is that is preying, the wild, the wolf, the lion, the whatever jackal, whatever it is that is trying to assault those beings, 
they have a difficult time assaulting so many when they're moving fast. It's hard to assault something that's so many. It's hard to make a decision on which one you're going to attack. It's like uh, there, there was a, a symbolism was like throwing somebody threw seven balls at you, right? Seven baseballs at you. It'll be hard for you to even catch one if you weren't aware that there were seven baseballs coming at you, right? So in that numbers is a source, is a sense of protection, right? And not only that, they also provide a sense of, uh, not a sense, real protection and a sense of protection, but they also provide in numbers, they provide the ability to attain resources easier, right? You know, many hands make light work, right? The more hands you have, the more eyes you have and, um, uh, as predator, um, as, as her, um, um, herding animals, the longer you can graze. When you ever see a deer, when he's eating by himself, he looks up every seven seconds, right? He's always looking up, looking up. But when a deer is uh, in a herd, in a group, it allows for them to have a little more comfort and they can eat a little longer without looking up, right? They can, it, uh, they can enjoy uh, grazing. So protection, eyes, right? Ears to be able to listen out. Um, but also the, the, uh, 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 the minds, right? The, the minds of those herds. They don't have to rely just on one person, one, one animal thinking that this is the way to go. No, they have several different perceptions of that that they can collaborate on and move on it. And as a matter of fact, the elephants, right, they have a, 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 a somewhat of a queen, right? And she makes the, she's chosen and she makes the best decision, right? So I don't want to get too much into how they're chosen, but um, so Allah has given us this as a sign to say, one, we do better in community, right? You are more successful in community. Two, you have a natural innate desire for community. Even the creatures that work on their own, right? You say the fox, you know, the fox is usually by itself. Um, the, you know, whatever creature you want to pull up, they must get together in order to procreate. They can't do it alone. So the ones you think that are the most loneliest creatures, they cannot survive without community. They can't survive without community. So there was a natural inclination for humans and people, for community and for animals. And Allah has shown us this as a sign for us so that we can learn from it and act upon it. So when we talk about communities, we're in, 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 um, in essence, we're talking about relationships. We're talking about starting with individual relationships, connections that we have with individuals of like mind individuals who have the same desire for the same destination, right? Or have the same issues, the same common causes, right? So Allah wants us to know that it is a natural inclination for us to have because her ideology can be dangerous, right? Wanting to join a community just to join a community can be dangerous. But believing that you don't need a community is also dangerous because it is an innate desire for you to do that. There are psychological studies that have been done on this, of course. You know, man is always studying everything, which is a beautiful thing. Um, and he starts off, uh, well, he doesn't start off, but he always ends up back studying himself. Yeah. So it is said that friendships are necessary, right? Having friends, it's a healthy uh, necessity for the human brain, right? For the human emotion, the emotional being of a human. It even says there was a study that was done um, that um, those people who felt alone, right? The people who reported it was a sleep study. They said that they didn't sleep well. They woke up, you know, every, uh, and sometimes they didn't know that they were waking up, uh, but they woke up and actually gained a, a smidget of consciousness and they went back to sleep. So it was a known study that those people who felt alone didn't get good sleep. So a lot of psychologists has linked this to the comfort of, uh, uh, of community or of, of having someone to look out for you. So that when you're in the sleep, you don't have to pop up and worry about somebody coming for you. You got another person there, 
just like the deer or the wildebeest. There are another set of eyes there, right? There's another set of ears there that is there. So you get to graze a little longer. You get to rest a little longer, you know? And you will take your turn in looking and getting up and looking around and you may still wake up, but not as often as someone who has felt secure by community, who feels secure by whatever relationship they have, whatever connection that they have. So these relationships that form communities, these are a necessity. But the danger lies in believing that we don't need these relationships, right? In believing that man was meant to be a hermit or woman was meant to be a hermit, to be alone. Because there is a natural, a natural desire within you, even the one, those who claim to be the most harmless, is that a word? I don't know. <laughs> the most lonely, the most secluded individual. There is a natural desire for you to want a relationship, right? To want some kind of connection with humanity. Because when we fall, well, this is one of the becauses, there are many reasons. When we fall, when we have trials, right? When we're under duress, when we're in danger, we go to someone, we seek out help, right? We go to that friend and some of us, we might talk to that person like, man, you know, I'm having a real bad day, man. My dog just died, job, lost my job. You know, you have somebody and that friend will listen. That's the first step, right? That friend listens and now you're getting it out. And they say psychologically, just getting it out is helpful. Just speaking out. Just hearing it in your, in your head. And sometimes you work it out yourself, just speaking out loud, right? But you speak it out loud and that friend is listening to you. And then hopefully, maybe that friend gives you a piece of advice or a hug, right? I don't know, whatever. Or he gives you, she, he or she gives you some form of comfort, right? Those people who don't, whether they believe it or not, they reach out, but by other means, right? When we look at the past and the history of, uh, uh, of our community, particularly, we have been what those who have felt, uh, and I don't want to overgeneralize, but I'm going to do it just a little bit. We felt uh, in a, always in a desolate place. And this is, this is the danger because the community, the, the resource, th those who are in control, this is an intentional feeling, right? This is a feeling, the desire to break up families, right? the desire to separate communities, to separate relationships. So in, in the African-American community, when we came up, we always feel like, I mean, what's the saying? You know, you know, you, you, I gotta get mine, you gotta get yours. We all out here by ourselves. I gotta look out for me first. I gotta do me, you do you. It's like it's an intentional divide. But where do we turn during these times? Turn to alcohol, right? We look for some kind of comfort or friendship at the bottom of a, of a bottle. We turn to drugs. We turn to uh, some form of soothing, right? Some form of, 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 of comfort that is not halal, that is not beneficial to ourselves. So yeah, the guy that lives alone, he don't need any friends, but he's, you know, turning bottles up left and right. You know, he's, he's, he's smoking whatever. And this is very funny because Today, I think they just actually federally pulled marijuana off of the um, uh, forbidden list, right? Federally, that's, I'm, I'm gonna stop. So they pulled it off federally. And the reason I say that is because I'm always complaining about, I think a lot of things that are happening now, not just marijuana, but marijuana, like they say, is a key to all the, the, the rest of the drugs. It's a gateway to, the, to, to drugs. So once people get more comfortable with it, they use it more comfortably and for me, that's my link. I think people drive crazy because of marijuana. <laughs> they've tried, they've seen them have been driving way more crazy. I don't want to get off into that. So people turn to something else outside of friendship, to something else to, to, to give them a false sense of security, right? A false sense of support, right? So they go to drugs. They go to alcohol. Some people go to a relationship that's not allowed, right? You go to a friendship, even those people who are married, right? Husband, wife, they're not getting the attention, the friendship that they need. Somebody else gives them some kind of, that they, they, they need that, right? Somebody else gives it to them, they go to that. 
because it's a necessity. It is a natural innate desire that we need to feel. So we have to be conscious. Allah is telling us in this ayah that it is natural. It is a necessity for humans to form communities, for humans and all things to have relationships. We have to be careful of, uh, of what relationships we, we, we connect with, but we have to be conscious enough to know that those relationships are a necessity. And so how do we deal with this uh, uh, need for a relationship? We deal with it um, as Allah has told us to deal with it, right? And I'm going to stop there and I want to jump to the ayat that I've, uh, to this ayat. This is ayat, um, this is Surah 4, Anissa, ayat 125. Allah says, who can be better in religion than one who submits his whole self to Allah, does good, and follows the way of Abraham, the true in faith. For Abraham did take Allah, um, for Allah did take Abraham for a friend. Sadaqallah wa deen. MashaAllah. What better friend to have than God? What better friend to have than Allah? And every time, I know I think, and most people think, when we think about being a friend, and, and, and the details of this is that uh, most people translate it to say Allah took him as an intimate friend, not just a Joe Blow, you know, some next door neighbor, but a friend, an intimate friend. And a lot of us, I don't want to say envious, but I want to know how he became a friend of Allah. You know, how did he get that status? How do you know? And who better to have as a friend than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When we think of Abraham, the things that we think of in general, uh, so we think about sacrifice, right? We know that Abraham gave, um, uh, he, 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 he took his wife and his, his son out to the desert, right? Took his wife and his son out to the desert and left him and walked away because Allah said so. He placed his son, you know, his, his future on the chopping block getting ready to, to, to sacrifice him because Allah said so, right? Before that, Abraham left his father, ignored his father. This is supplying a lot back then. You know, had an argument with his father and basically left, cut his father off because Allah said so. So Abraham was the man who was not afraid to make sacrifices for his friend. He was not afraid to, to, uh, 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 to cut off. And when you look at those three things, you, his future, right? His present, his wife and his, his present uh, son, his past, his father. He was willing to cut all of those things off to, to, to gain a friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, most people, I mean, when you talk about, at, ver at the very least, when you talk about power, and you're talking about money. There are people who can care less about money and power if they could just have progeny, right? If they can just have the future, if they can have their children set up in a really nice place, we'd sacrifice everything for that. Abraham was willing to sacrifice that to keep a good, clean, pure relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we start talking about friendships, our first conversation begins with being a friend with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? With being a friend with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do we become a friend with Allah? We do that by not letting anything get in the way with that initial friendship. That means neither our future or our past or our present situation to interrupt, should interrupt the relationship that we have with God. The relationship, the friendship, the connection that we have with God. Not the desire to get that big job or to make that money or to set your children up in the future, right? Not the desire to please, to be written down in history, to please your parents, right? Not the desire to feel good right now, you know, to feel comfortable right now. Not that desire should get in the way with your relationship with Allah. And if you do that, then you can form real relationships, right? Prophet Isa, alayhi salam, in the book of Barnabas, uh, and I'm, I'm not quoting, I'm paraphrasing, he said, 
that a friend is like a physician to the soul, right? A physician to the soul. It's a lot to be taken from that. But a physician to the soul implies, not implies, it says outright that you are friends not with that body, right? Not with that personality, right? Not with that, 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 uh, 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 even with the actions. It's almost not even with the actions. You are friends with that soul. That's an entirely different connection. And not only are you friends with that soul, you are almost, you know, you're trying to keep that soul well. You want the best for that person's soul, right? Mashallah. How, how, how powerful is that? How much love is that? You know, so for us to reach out to friendships, we're reaching out. We want to find people who want the best for our soul, right? We want to find things that we connect with that is going to be good for our soul. And in re return to that, we want to be able to do the same to others who are around us. We want to motivate them. We want to uplift their souls, right? We want not just help them make money or get them back on their feet. Yeah, we want to assist them in physical needs and, 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 and assistance. But most importantly, we want to make sure those people get to gender. Put it simple, right? We want to make sure that they are doing everything so that they have a friend in Allah. So when you choose your friends, when you choose the things that you are going to spend, right? This is another thing. Friends are the thing, people that you spend the most time around. Friends, communities are the people, that's right, they're the people some of us may call family friends, right? So we're, these are the people that you spend the most time. When you choose those people, when you choose those people, you want to make sure that you are choosing people who are going to be conscious and have a desire to make your soul better. Those people who, who are going to be Bottom line, have a better relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how we, 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 we choose our friends. We choose our friends based on their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that connection. And then we are not afraid to assist them in, helping, in trying to keep that connection with Allah. And hopefully they're not afraid to do the same for us. So Allah has given us these great signs in Quran and throughout the world. And funny, you know, signs that yes, they are literally the the like ayat is the the a line in Quran, right? It's a sign itself. The book is an uh, actual book, but there are signs and um, uh, uh, maybe books to be read outside of Quran, but with the guidance of Quran. Because when you think about it, you know, what was Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him? When, he, when, when God told him, said, Ikra, what was he reading? Was there an actual book? No. So these are ayats. These are signs that Allah has given us, which we use the Quran to, 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 um, to understand, to understand. And may Allah continue to keep us close to him. May Allah continue to build our relationship with him, our friendship with Allah. And may Allah continue to keep us uh, directed in what is righteous and keep us, uh, uh, keep those who are righteous close to us. Truly my prayer and my service of sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, the cherisher of the worlds. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, you Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Allah has blessed us to, um, to already have this concept of, of communities. We've already lived in communities. We, we, in this society, excuse me, that we have, we are instructed, it is permissible, it is promoted to live in communities. But there is always some underlying drive to keep us separate, even though we sit in the same house with the same people, right? You can sit in the same room with somebody 
and not even not ever say a word to them, right? You can sit in there and never really connect with them if there is no intent to, right? So Allah says that everything is judged in its intentions, right? By by your we are all judged by our intentions. So we have to pursue. We can't just wait for it to organically happen, which it will, but we have to try to make sure that we have some control, right? That we are striving to have the best of families. We have to pursue this. And we pursue this by being the best of a friend by whoever who is around us, right? The current relationships, friendships that we have, we protect those. We build on those intentionally, right? And I know I've said this before. So we have to not only do that, but we have to protect the relationships that we have had uh, with people who have passed away, right? We said that um, Prophet Isa stated that, uh, you know, uh, a friend is a physician of the soul, right? And so that means that once someone passes away, that doesn't mean they stop being your friend. That does not mean that you stop being that person's friend, right? Because that person was more than just flesh and bones. That person was a soul, right? So how do you befriend a soul that has passed away? How do you connect and befriend a soul that has passed away that you don't see anymore, right? You befriend a person that has passed away the same way we befriend uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, the same way we befriend um, um, uh, Ibrahim, peace and blessings be upon him, the same way we befriend all of the prophets, the same way we befriend all of uh, uh, um, Adam, salam, all of these prophets, all of these great men, we befriend them by taking on their task, by taking on the righteous things that they had done by making that righteousness live on, by being the predecessor of uh, 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 and, and promoting the, the, um, the work that those people have done. That's a good friend. You know why? Well, several reasons, right? Allah says that when, when uh, 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 the only, uh, the thing that lives and, and, and gives you more blessings beyond you once you have passed away are the deeds that you have placed that are continuing to grow. Right. And we always jump to, OK, I'm going to build a masjid. And we should, which we are in works right now. And I said I was going to throw this in all the time. We are in works and building a masjid. So if you want to get some of them blessings, jump aboard. There's room for everybody. You can build a brick. You can lift up. You can do whatever you have to do to be a part of building something that lives beyond you, that follows, that, that, that turns people towards God beyond you and will give you blessings in your grave. But this is the same thing that you do with your father, with your, your mother, your grandfather, your grandmother. They have given you great wisdom. Some of it, most of it, inshallah, righteous. Some stuff they've done that you say, ah, I don't want to do that. And you bless them by learning, by, by not doing that. Because you allow for them to be an example for what not to do. You know, there's a blessing in that. But the most blessing is when you start emulating those things that that person has given to you, that righteousness, that, that, that guidance, those teachings and those thoughts and emulating, not just thinking about them, but putting them into action, putting them into action. So you befriend that soul that has passed away. You keep that friendship intact. And hey, it's a two-way street, right? So if a friendship, if a soul is in heaven or, you know, if a soul is there in the righteous space, and that soul is praying. One of the most beautiful things that was told to me, and I know I'm jumping, but one of the most beautiful things was told to me when my, and I'm probably giving way too much, if I'm giving it though. When my, uh, my first son passed away, you know, at a very young age. But one of the most beautiful things that was told to me was that that child, because of the age that he passed, goes straight to Jannah. It comforted me. The second thing was that child is sitting in Jannah praying for you consistently. What kind of love is that? And it, it was such a comfort and a pleasure. It's, we have to understand this passing thing. You know, a lot of us turn away from it. We run from it. We think scary things about it, right? But 
that child is praying for you. So if that soul is in a good place, and we are told to consistently pray for that soul, like we are told to consistently keep the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, in our prayers. We should keep him in our prayers. We, will we can assume that he is keeping us in his prayers while he was there, while he's in Jannah, wherever he is. Um, so we can assume our loved ones are in a good space, those who are especially the righteous ones, if we chose our friends closely, and that they are praying for us to be successful. They are praying for our souls. So the best way to keep good friendship, to keep good people around you, is to be a good friend, to be a good person, to be righteous, and to be to help someone out, to try to redirect, to carry on the mission. We all have one mission, to carry on that mission. Let us all make it. Let's all take hands. Let us all make it to Jannah. Let's all strive hard to make it to Jannah. Let us all look out for each other's souls. Let us assist each other. And let us remember those who have came before us. And let us pray for them. But even better, let us actually put the actions of the wisdom and the understanding and the guidance that they have given to us to work. Let us go to work. And with that, we will find many benefits in the communities that we build. We will find many comforts. We will find it easier for us to exist in this world and to exist in the world afterwards. Um, but most importantly, of course, is to, for us to maintain and connect and keep the connection. We allow, always get, give us a mercy, but strive to become like Ibrahim, alayhi salam, to become a friend of Allah, to have Allah you know, look out for us, <laughs> you know, and they say, and I'm going to end with this, inshallah, they say that um, uh, you should give Allah, in the Quran it says, give Allah the most beautiful loan, right, just like a good friend, would you not, and we can't think of Allah as needing help, because Allah don't need the loan, it's called a loan because you're getting it back, it's not because Allah need it, but if Allah, if a good friend asks you, you know, we're taking a little bit out, but if a good friend asked you for a little assistance, you would run to it. If your closest friend asked you for $5, what kind of friend would you be if you didn't give them $5, if you had it? If your closest friend asked you for a sandwich or for, you know, for a dua, <laughs> or for what, what kind of friend would you be if you didn't do that? You would not, I, I would argue you would really not be a friend, right? So if you want to be a friend, your first drive is to be a friend of Allah. And inshallah, by giving that beautiful loan, we know what the loan is, right? It's that service. It's that sacrifice. Your future, your past, your present. It's that consistently giving up in order to not put other things in place of his friendship, right? In order to not put other things before him, right? So you're giving that and you are striving your best. We are striving our best to be a friend to Allah with, with prayers and, 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 and uh, really praying for Allah that he will take us on as his friend. And if we do that, then we will be walking in the shoes of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. We'll be walking in the shoes of our forefathers, those who are righteous, and we'll, we'll, we'll reap the benefits. They'll reap the benefits. Our future will reap the benefits. We are community, not just one time zone here. We are community of humanity. So let us continue to keep that in mind. Let us continue to stay close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah continue to keep us in a state where we are willingly giving a beautiful loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consistently without malice, without uh, 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 ugly faces. Uh, may Allah continue to keep us close to our loved ones at all times by keeping their souls, by, 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 by joining their souls and praying and wanting the best for their souls. And may Allah continue to keep us guided by those who have come before us in the most righteous way. O oh Allah, exalt Muhammad and the true followers of Muhammad is that it is exalt Abraham and the true followers of Abraham, surely thou art praised and magnified. Mm -hmm. O oh Allah, bless Muhammad and the true followers of Muhammad is that it is bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham. Surely thou art praised and magnified. Amen. My Lord, grant me and my offspring to keep up prayer. Amen. Our Lord, accept our prayer. Amen. Our Lord, grant protection in me and the believers and my parents on the day when the reckoning will take place. Amen. Oh Allah, 
I seek the refuge from anxiety and grief. And I seek the refuge from lack of strength and laziness. And I seek the refuge from cowardliness and niggardliness. And I seek the refuge from being overpowered by debt and the oppression of men. O Allah, suffice thy me with what is lawful to keep me away from what is prohibited. And with thy grace, make me free from want of what is beside thee. Amen. Amen.